Hi guys, in this video, I wanna talk about intermittent fasting, bigger meals, and bloating. I had a question from someone recently wanting to know how big of a meal they should consume if they consume two meals or one meal because when they eat, they're just completely bloated and stuffed. So let's just talk about that. When you go less meals, do intermittent fasting, you wanna start increasing the amount of calories for that meal so we don't end up with a low calorie diet. To do that, you have to have bigger meals. The problem is you only have so much capacity to digest that food, especially if you're not used to it and your metabolism is slow, so you end up just stuffing yourself and being bloated, so we wanna avoid that. And also some people, when they're starting out, they might have the fear of not eating so frequently, so they might start eating so much food because they're freaking out like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna eat, so I have to eat everything I can squeeze into my stomach. Not a good idea. And that just adds stress to the whole digestive system. So we wanna have the optimum meal, the perfect meal where you're full, but you're not stuffed. So there's a couple points I wanna bring up. Number one, you can go ahead and separate out um, your vegetables with your protein and fat. So that way you don't have to eat the whole thing at once. So instead of sitting down to a 30 minute meal and cramming as much food as you can, go ahead and spread it out for an hour or even two hours of eating. So let's say, let's say this is at three o'clock and this is at five o'clock. So you would eat your, all your vegetables first, your seven cups or your 10 cups of vegetables right there, big salad, and I do this a lot too, but you're not eating your protein until you know an hour or even two hours later. So you're giving your chance for your system to digest it and then eat again. So that way we can extend our fasting time to around 23 hours or 23.5 hours to 21 hours of fasting. So that's still a good amount of time to fix insulin resistance and really heal if you're doing kind of a one meal but it's stretched out over two hours. And of course, when you do this, you wanna do it gradually and ease into it. So you're at two meals for a while and then eventually go to one if you wanna do that. Um, some people don't wanna do that and that's totally fine. So that means you would just do two meals but just make sure those two meals, you don't you apply the same principle, you don't stuff yourself too much. So let me just give you an example. Let's say you do two meals a day. You eat at one o'clock and five o'clock. What you could do is have your protein at one and then all your vegetables at three, and then your protein again at five o'clock, that way you spread it out. So the point I'm trying to make is that when you combine so many different types of foods together, it's more stress on the digestive system. It requires more enzymes, it's harder to digest, and there's more bloating involved. So if you were to separate that out and, and consume your protein and fat, let's say at one, your vegetables at three, then your protein and fat at five, you would have an easier time to digest that. The other point you want to make is that when you eat, many people do not have the stomach acid to digest that food. So normally in your stomach you have a pH of between one and three. That's extremely acid. Uh, when you get older and you age, you lose that acid. And then the symptom would be GERD, acid reflux, uh, indigestion, bloating, gas. That, those are the symptoms for a low stomach acid. And that's why we're recommending more apple cider vinegar. Um, there is one thing that I use or you can use, Digest Plus. This has a concentrated apple cider vinegar and betaine hydrochloride if you want to take it in a tablet. Yeah, sometimes on Thanksgiving, I will pull that out when everyone's stuffed, give them some of that so they can eat a little bit longer because people like to stuff themselves on Thanksgiving. And the next point I wanna make is when you consume certain vegetables, you might not be able to digest those vegetables and you might bloat just from the vegetable alone, not necessarily all the food that you're eating. So you, you wanna just kind of isolate that. Like people that have problems with broccoli, for example, they get bloating, but maybe not kale. But some people have a problem with cabbage and some people have a problem with kale. So you may have to isolate a certain vegetable that's bloating you and replace it but that could be doing it right there, especially if you're not used to having those vegetables. Um, food allergies, uh, you might have an allergy to cheese or lactose or casein, that's the protein in the milk. So you really wanna just kind of be aware of that and change up your food to see if it's a food allergy. But because you're not doing grains, because you're not doing sugars, because you're not doing a lot of the other processed foods, there should be less allergies. And then we have the last one, which is too much fat. 
This is a common mistake that people make. They kind of overdo it on the fat because you can have all these keto bombs and these snacks and this and that, and they end up just having a lot of gallbladder strain. So this is the, the kind of the wild variable that you have to keep adjusting. Uh, so if you go too much, you're going to have not just bloating in your right rib cage, but you're going to have pain all the way up into your right shoulder because of the phrenic nerve and the gallbladder refers up there, causing headaches and all sorts of things. And if you don't have enough fat, you're going to be hungry in between the meals. So we have to kind of juggle that. So I'll put a little link down below on to clarify this. I did a whole video just on this one point. All right, so these are some things to consider when you're having less meals, but you want to maintain your calories. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, press the button below and I will keep you in the know. Hey, that rhymes.